Hey amigos, welcome to iSpeaks. In this video series, we will discuss about the Taliban and the reason for the rise in Afghanistan. Before going directly to the topic of Taliban, let us look what happened in the 19th and 20th centuries. Due to the competition for power and influence in Central Asia between Britain and Russia led to three Anglo-Afghan wars. The foundation for the beginning of first Anglo-Afghan war is the British thought that the existing king Dost Muhammad was either unfriendly to them or unable to resist Russian penetration into Afghanistan. The attack on Afghanistan was declared by the Britain. They captured Kabul in August 1839 and restored Shah Shuja as the ruler, who moves in the favor of Britain, in the place of Dost Muhammad. The Afghans didn't tolerate the king imposed on them by the Britain and started to fight against the Britain. They fought for three years with the Britain and defeated the Britain. They also killed Shah Shuja and replaced Dost Muhammad as their king. This fight is known as First Anglo-Afghan War. Due to the rising influence of Soviet Union on Afghanistan led to Second Anglo-Afghan War. Britain won the Second Anglo-Afghan War and supported new King Abdul Rahman. Here, the main aim of Britain is to just have an influence on Afghanistan. The Third Anglo-Afghan War is also known as War of Independence. The king of that period, Emir Amanullah Khan, led a surprise attack against the British in India on 3rd May 1919. This started the Third Anglo-Afghan War. As Britain was still dealing with the losses of the World War I, a formal agreement was made to stop fighting towards the end of 1919, and Afghanistan was completely free of British influence. Emir Amanullah Khan declared Afghanistan a monarchy, Kingdom of Afghanistan. He gained early popularity within Afghanistan and he used his influence to modernize the country. He introduced schools for both girls and boys and overturned the centuries old traditions such as strict dress code for women. He also introduced modern constitution that concedes equal rights and individual freedom. His wife, Queen Soraya Tarzi, played an important role in his policy towards women. This rapid modernization created an adverse reaction and led to post rebellion. During Amanullah Khan's visit to Europe, opposition to his rule increased, which made him to leave Afghanistan and then he moved to British India. The rebellions who opposed the rule of King Amanullah Khan were thrown out in a year. Some reports claim that it happened with the help of British. In the year 1933, Muhammad Jahir Shah, the son of King Nadir Shah, became the new king of Afghanistan. He was announced as the king at the age of 19. In the year 1964, a new constitution was introduced by Jahir Shah, which made Afghanistan a modern democratic state by introducing free elections, civil rights and women's rights. He was the longest serving ruler of Afghanistan. He served for over 39 years. His long ruling was marked by peace and stability in the country. In 1973, while Jahir Shah was in Italy for vacation, his governance was overthrown in a coup. A coup is nothing but a non-violent revolution with group of protesters, which is led by Muhammad Dawood Khan, who was the cousin of Muhammad Jahir Shah. Muhammad Dawood Khan was the former Prime Minister of Afghanistan under Jahir Shah's rule. Dawood Khan conducted this coup with the support of a political party called PDPA, that is, People's Democratic Party of Afghanistan, which runs on the ideology of communism. PDPA was formed in 1965 by Babra Karmaline Nur Muhammad Taraki, and due to some internal issues, PDPA was divided into two parts, that is, Parcham and Kalk. Dawood Khan became the new president of Afghanistan by ending more than 225 years of monarchical government. On 17th April 1978, a prominent member of PDPA, Mir Akbar Khaibar, was murdered. Nur Muhammad Taraki of PDPA claimed that the government itself was responsible for the death. PDPA leaders were started to fear that Dawood Khan was planning to eliminate them. During the funeral ceremony of Khyber, a protest against the Dawood Khan's government took place. And within a quick time after the protest, most of the leaders of PDPA, including Babrak Karmal, the founder of PDPA, were arrested by the government. On 27th April 1978, the attacks on the presidential palace were started 
by the afghan military who are in the favor of pdpa it was also supported by the members of pdpa led by nur mohammad taraki the thing we need to notice here is the date for the attack was strategically planned on 27th april as it was the day before friday that is thursday because friday is the muslim day of worship so the attack was started on the afternoon of 27th april that is on thursday so that they can easily fought in the next day without much effort as most of the military commanders and government workers were off duty on 20th april that is friday an announcement was made on radio afghan that the kalk were overthrowing daud khan's government at first daud khan was asked to surrender but he refused and started firing towards the military along with his brother finally daud khan and his family were killed in this revolt this revolution is known as sar revolution